and welcome back to Machine Learning. I'm Chirita Christi, and in this video, we are going to talk about hypothesis testing and the Monte Carlo approximation. So let's begin. Hypothesis testing is used when you're dealing with random variables and because you have a common situation, uh, which is where you have to make decisions um, or choices based on the observations or data which are random in nature. And the solutions for dealing with these uh, situations is known as the decision theory, or sometimes it is also called hypothesis testing, and it is a widely used process in real life situations. The key component of a machine learning problem is to use a sample-based training data, um, which, which is oftentimes used to represent a large set of um, actual data. So we often take um, a sample out of a given population, and then we try to analyze that sample and try to make decisions about the entire population uh, using the sample. So it is very important uh, to estimate how confidently an outcome can be related to the behavior of the training data so that the decisions which uh, decisions on the actual data can be made. So uh, you have to provide some percentage of confidence uh, about your findings of the sample data uh, to show that whatever you found in the sample data is also going to be applicable for your entire population or the larger set of actual data. And so hypothesis testing is an integral part of machine learning because it is used exactly for this reason. In terms of statistics, you can say that a hypothesis is an assumption about the probability law of the random variables. Uh, for example, you can have a random sample um, x1 up to xn of a random variable whose PDF, which is the pr probability density function on parameter k, is given by this function f uh, of x comma k, uh, which is equal to f of x1, x2 up to xn, okay, for all values of k. So I'm sure you, you understand this if you have already watched uh, the previous videos that we did on uh, PDFs and probability distributions. So given this data, we are going to see uh, what we want to find out. So we want to test the assumption that k is equal to zero against the assumption that k is equal to k1. So there are two assumptions, k equal to k0 and k equal to k1. And in this case, the assumption that k is equal to k0 is known as the null hypothesis, and it is often denoted as h0. And the other assumption, that k is equal to k1 is known as the alternate hypothesis and it is often denoted as h1. So what happens in hypothesis testing is we have uh, two hypotheses, the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. So null is something that is there by default, okay? Um, so if you're trying to prove that you have a drug or a medicine for curing, um, curing cancer, then um, you would have to first the first thing that you have to do is to take a null hypothesis that says that the drug does not cure cancer because that is the default um, default situation. You haven't proved anything yet. And so that is your null hypothesis. But um, when you prove, when you're trying to prove that your drug is working, then that would be your hy uh, alternate hypothesis. So you have to uh, try to prove your alternate hypothesis. And if you fail to do so, then your null hypothesis is uh, what is actually correct. So that is the one that is accepted. So we usually write it like that. Uh, H0 is k equal to k1, and H1 is k equal to, uh, sorry, H0 here would be k equal to k0, and H1 would be k equal to k1. So this is how you have two different hypotheses, null and alternative. And you would be performing a, if you are performing a simple hypothesis test, okay, then that is where you will be having all the parameters specified with the exact value. So the uh, value of H0, H1, everything will be uh, specified with the exact value for you. Uh, but if the parameters don't have an exact value, like 
H1 where uh, K is not equal to K1, then H1 is called composite because you have multiple possibilities for H1. The concept of hypothesis testing is the decision process which is used for validating a hypothesis. Okay, so if you have an alternative hypothesis and you want to check if that hypothesis works or not, um, then that process of validating it is known as hypothesis testing. And you can interpret a decision process by dividing an observation space into two regions. So there's region R0 and region R1. And um, if you find out that all these uh, values of X, which is your random variable, all your set of um, observations, if that um, belongs to R0, then you can say that the decision is um, in favor of H0, which is your null hypothesis. But if you find out that um, this random variable X actually belongs to R1 in the region one, then you can say that the decision is in favor of H1, that is hypothesis one. So the region uh, R0 is known as an acceptance region because the null hypothesis is accepted. And R1 is known as the rejection region because um, often we, we start by believing um, in, a hy in hypothesis testing, we start uh, our experiment by assuming that the null hypothesis is correct. So in that case, the null hypothesis um, is known as something that is accepted and if you prove that your alternate hypothesis is correct, then that means your null hypothesis is rejected. So that is why the region R0, which corresponds to H0, is known as the acceptance region. But um, the region R1 that corresponds to the alternative hypothesis is known as the rejection region. And there are four possible decisions that you can make based on the two regions that you have observed in the uh, in the observation space. So the first um, possible decision that you can make is that H0 is true, which means you're going to accept H0, okay? Um, because uh, you found out through your hypothesis testing that H0 is true. So you're going to accept the null hypothesis and that would be a correct decision made, uh, made based on your, uh, based on, on the proof that you have given based on hypothesis testing. The second possibility is that H0 is true, but you still um, choose to reject H0, which means the null hypothesis is true, but you still reject the null hypothesis and you accept um, the alternative hypothesis. So in this case, this is an incorrect decision because although you performed hypothesis testing, you still decided to not use um, the results. And the third possible decision you can make is uh, where H1 is true and you accept H1, which is a correct decision because the alternative hypothesis was proven true by hypothesis testing and you accepted it. And the fourth kind of decision that you can make is where H1 is true and yet you reject H1, which means you, uh, you accept H0. So you accept the null hypothesis and reject the alternative hypothesis, even though through hypothesis testing, you found out that the, um, that the alternative hypothesis is true. So this would again be an incorrect decision. So you can see that there is a possibility of making two correct decisions and two incorrect decisions and uh, the corresponding actions. So the erroneous decisions that you can make, okay, um, the two incorrect ones, they are termed as type one error. So first, first is type one error, okay. For example, you reject the um, null hypothesis, okay. Or in other words, if you're rejecting the null hypothesis, it means you're accepting the alternative hypothesis, even though uh, H0 is true. So even though your null hypothesis is true. So an example of this type of a situation, a type one error occurs in the situation in a malignancy test of a tumor. Okay. So in this case, a benign tumor is accepted as a malignant tumor and corresponding treatment is started. So a benign tumor is a tumor that's not cancerous and a malignant tumor would be a tumor that is cancerous. So you are actually um, 
uh, by your testing, you proved that the tumor is actually um, benign, which means it's not cancerous, and yet um, you have started treatment by considering it cancerous. So obviously that's not a good thing. So that is known as a type one error. Okay, it is also called alpha error, where good is actually interpreted as bad. The second type of error um, is known as type two error, where you are rejecting the alternative hypothesis and accepting the null hypothesis, even though the alternative hypothesis H1 is true. So in this example, there can be a situation where uh, you perform a malignancy test on a tumor. You found out that the tumor is actually malignant, cancerous, okay? And yet you accepted it as benign tumor, which means um, you accepted it as um, non-cancerous tumor and you did not do any treatment for it. And so you can know that, you know that, that there can be devastating effects, right? It is also known as a beta error where bad is interpreted as good. And this kind of an error has a more devastating effect uh, or impact than the type 1 error. So what are the probabilities of these two types of errors, type 1 and type 2? So this is the probability uh, of um, type 1 error, which we are defining as P of 1, which is equal to probability of D1 given H0. So what is uh, D1 over here or DI in this case? DI where I can be 0 or 1, it denotes the event that the decision is for accepting HI. So if it is D1, then that means decision to ex accept H1. So decision to accept the alternative hypothesis given the probability of the null hypothesis. So that's what it means, okay? Which means you're actually finding the probability of um, X being in uh, region one, which corresponds to your alternative hypothesis uh, given the probability of H0, the null hypothesis. And for type two error, uh, you have the probability of D0, which means um, accepting null hypothesis, even though the correct one is the um, alternative hypothesis, right? So that's why we have H1 over here. So the decision, decision is to accept null hypothesis, even though H1 is actually the correct um, decision, right? The correct hypothesis. And um, of course, here you will have X belongs to R0, given the value of H1, okay? So here P1 is also denoted by A and it is known as level of significance, okay? Whereas P2 is denoted by beta. So P1 is often known as alpha, P2 is often known as beta, okay? And it is known as the power of the test. So P1 and P2, um, they are also called alpha and beta, okay? And alpha is called level of significance. Beta is called the power of the test, okay? So they are not independent of each other because they represent probabilities of the event for, from the same kind of a decision problem. So alpha and beta are definitely not independent uh, variables. So normally, if you see a decrease in one type of error, it would lead to an increase in another type of error when the sample size is fixed. So if you see alpha decreasing, then beta would be increasing and vice versa. So though it is desirable to reduce both types of errors, it is only possible to do that by increasing the sample size. So if your sample size remains fixed, then reducing one error will just lead to an increase in the other error. But if you increase your sample size, then you can um, uh, reduce both types of errors, okay? And in all practical applications of hypothesis testing, each of the four possible outcomes and courses of actions are associated with relative importance or certain cost, and thus the final goal can be to reduce the overall cost. So your final goal is to reduce the overall cost or the overall um, error. Okay, so what are the probabilities of the correct decision? So this is the probability. Uh, where you have selected or decided to choose a null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually correct. So this is D0 given H0. And of course, you're calculating that X belongs to R0 given H0. And the third 
The second one is probability of uh, decision being made to accept the alternative hypothesis when uh, the alternative hypothesis is also actually correct. So this is the probability of X belongs to R1 given H1. Now let's take a look at the Monte Carlo approximation. So what is the Monte Carlo approximation? It is a technique that can approximate the expected value of any function of a random variable by simply drawing samples of, from the population of the random variable and then computing the arithmetic mean of the function applied to the samples. Okay, and here is the formula for it. So you can see it is um, um, a formula that uses integration, which um, is nearly as good as saying you're using sigma. Okay, so you can be using sigma here. S is your sample. So all the values from one to S are taken and you are just uh, calculating the CD, um, you're just calculating the PDF of this variable. And what, what it says is, um, this is actually nothing but the weighted mean of a variable fx into px. We all know that, right? That is the weighted mean. And what Monte Carlo approximation does is you can approximate the expected value, which means the mean of any function of a random variable. You can find the mean of any function of a random variable by just taking some samples from the population of that variable and then calculating its arithmetic mean. So if you calculate the arithmetic mean, you can find the mean of the of any function of that random variable. So I hope you understood all this and I'll be back with the next video. So I'll see you there and thank you for watching.